So a way to bring worms in your garden is to add fertility to the soil. We add leaves, we add grass clippings, chemical free grass clippings, we add coffee grounds, and we don't till. Now the only soil disturbance we choose to do is if you're going to plant potatoes or something of that nature, you're going to have to dig a, a drill or a trench here. So you can use a shovel. This soil is on the moister, damp side and we used a garden fork and the reason why we did that was to prevent or limit the casualty of worms. Just uh, in this cluster alone here, I've got a small worm there. Let's open this up. I got a worm there, worms there, a worm there, there's a big worm there, another couple of baby worms there, another one there. So we have a lot of worms just in that little pile of soil that I brought up. So we want to be aware of the, soil, the, the worms that we have and we keep them. If you don't have worms, build your soil. Don't add the worms. They will come. Now there is a problem in which we are, we personally have not seen yet in our garden, but it is uh, been reported in the city of Milwaukee. It's called the jumping worm. Uh, we had Sharon Morris from the University Extension here in the Milwaukee area on last year, our radio program. And here's a little snippet of that interview that she describes and talks about what the jumping worm is and how you can identify it. Um, there is a new inv invasive species called the jumping worm. What is it and how, what do consumers need to be aware of uh, before they purchase soil in the state of Wisconsin? Yeah, jumping worms are becoming a real scourge. Um, people are pretty alarmed when they find them in their yards. They're not earthworms. We'll start with that. And you never have just one. They are in large groups, and they squirm like crazy when they are um, disturbed. And so they were calling them crazy worms, then jumping worms. They do move around, around very erratically when they're, they're disturbed. And they're also always found just below the soil surface. They don't go down into tunnels and come back up like our regular earthworms do. Um, they come into your yard with soil in containers of plants that you've purchased from other locations, from plants that you have shared from other gardeners, and also in some of the bulk nursery products like mulches and soils. Uh, and it's often very difficult to detect that they are in those products. So a lot of caution should be used uh, when you're purchasing those kinds of things and even when you're bringing in new plants into your yard. Really check the root system, check the soil that's in the, the pot and with the plant. I would like I say they're on the top of the soil surface. They eat all of the organic matter out of the soil. And the soil ends up looking like coffee grounds. So it's really distinctive when you've got them. They look a lot like our usual earthworms, but they do have a lighter band around their body than earthworms. And that band is flat with the rest of their body, whereas our earthworms, that band that goes around them is raised, kind of raised. Um, the biggest problem is that there's nothing you can do about them at this time. Digging that soil out and removing it won't do it. Um, you often move them from place to place in your own yard by working in that soil and you contaminate your tools. You'll end up having some of the uh, very small worms, the, the larvae, on your tools. And in the spring, it's especially difficult because they're so small, you can't really see them. And all that's there are the cocoons that overwinter. The adults die in the winter. So it's just something to really be aware of, be very careful when you're bringing things into your property. And for the time being, if you do discover that you have jumping worm, be very careful not to transmit it to other areas of your yard or other people's yards. Um, clean your tools off really well, and even your shoes and your boots where you've been working. Um, and wait, we will, the research is ongoing, and uh, hopefully we will find a way to control them. Uh, do you know if there's any known cases in the southeast Wisconsin area or the Milwaukee County area at this point? Oh, yes, definitely. Okay. It's in many places, many places. People who have absolutely no idea that they have them and then they start, they learn about them, and they start working in their soil, and lo and behold, there they are. And, and once they get done with the organic matter in the soil, they start eating the roots of the plants, correct? 
Well, they they actually don't eat the roots of the plant, but they take so, so much out of the soil okay. that the plants can't thrive. Okay. The roots can't thrive. So that's how they do damage to the roots. It's just by their feeding on the organic matter all around the roots. The soil is absolutely amazing when they get done with it. It, it really truly looks like coffee grounds. So you may or may not have it. You need to be vigilant of that and, and be aware, whether you're in the Milwaukee area or parts of the country, as it can be transmitted through potting mixes and, and plant life. Also, Mike Pigleski from the Vegetable Gardening Show, he had a representative from the University of Madison on that talked about the jumping worm and the uh, research that are going in, that's going into it. Uh, that interview is linked in the show notes below. So we want to encourage the strength and the, the fertility of our soil to bring the worms in. They have a tremendous power of uh, bringing nutrients up from eight feet deep. They can produce a third a pound of worm castings a year per worm. And you should have between nine and 12 worms per cubic foot of soil in your garden if it's a good nutrient rich soil. We have somewhere between 20 and 30 worms in our one square foot per soil. Power of worms makes gardening on your end a whole lot easier. For more information, please visit the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com.